Let's go down to Rome's Raw Real Garage rant. It's been a while since we've done these, but you know, the Vikings allegedly fall to the Detroit Lions 31-29. Still 5-1 on the season, and you know, if we record this right after the game, you know, motions were running high, and the Vikings not showing up in the first half, getting the lead late in the game. Looked like they were going to do it again, but offensively, didn't get a drive at the end. Defensively, couldn't stop a drive, and just sort of is what it is. Right, but I was thinking too. So, <laughs> Lions fans are obviously thumping their chest, uh, acting like this would. Yeah, oh, th- this is funny. The both fan bases are acting like the Vikings lost the Lions by thirty. <laughs> uh, Lions fans are actually in the comments section calling this a dog walking. Like they don't understand what a, a last second field goal win by two a- a- actually means, right? And I mean, think about it. Now, obviously, we're the purple positivity guy, right? And it's going to be so beautiful because you're going to see the media, especially the local media, just pull a complete 180. Oh, we knew that there were frauds. Oh, it was 2016. Oh, it was 2003 over and over again. But I'm actually feeling pretty good because Lions are solid. Don't get me wrong. Uh, even though Lions fans are always like, oh, if we had Hutchinson, Lions win by 50. Okay, cool. If the Vikings had Hawkinson, Reisner, and Blake Cashman outside, how about that? I mean, the Vikings probably win, but uh, let's not compare injuries here. Also, let's not talk about how if Kurt Cousins stays healthy last season, the Vikings win the division. That's not what I said. Mm. Uh, so, if you believe the media hype, right, and the Lions are the numero uno team in the National Football League, they are a juggernaut. They cannot be stopped. And the Vikings lost to the Lions on a last-second field goal by two in a game where the Vikings mentally were still in Cabo in the first half and basically imploded in the second quarter and defensively allowed the Lions four straight touchdown drives of 69-plus yards. Not nice. Not nice. And O'Connell, outside of the scripted plays to start the second half, basically was very uneven play calling, uh, especially that final drive where you went three and out in the worst possible fashion. <sighs> All of that had to happen for the Vikings to lose to, remember, not my words, allegedly the best team in the National Football League by two on the last second field goal. All of that had to happen against the Vikings, right? And like I said, don't get me wrong, the Lions, the Lions are great. Lions are studs. Right. And the Vikings, they got back into the game. They fought and they clawed. And guess what? If Jake Bates kick hooks to the right and misses like it kind of looked like it was going to at at the beginning, nothing changes. Nothing changes. Five and one, six and oh, don't care. There isn't some new bylaw or constitutional amendment that says that you have to go undefeated to win a Super Bowl. Right. And in a lot of ways, this loss can be very good for the Vikings because, you know, the Vikings were 5-0, and and you know what? They put the bang thing on the Texans, a good team. that beat the Packers in Lambeau, which is hard to do. They beat Aaron Rodgers on the Jets. They beat the Niners, who uh, kind of get the brakes beat off them right now by the Chiefs. Uh, but even though they're 3-4, and four, they're still going to be considered NFC contenders over the Vikings. Uh, but maybe this team was leading, reading a little bit of their press. And over the bye week, maybe they're just like, oh, who are the man? We the man. Who are the man? We the man. Well, guess what? You beat yourselves. And you had a chance to have the statement win of statement wins this season, and you let it slip through your fingers. And second half, you know, respect the way that you played. Uh, I love that you showed heart. I love that you showed grit. I love that you fought, as opposed to just rolling over and dying uh, like the Cowboys did to the Lions last week, like the Seahawks did to the Lions two weeks ago, right? But... You know, this isn't horseshoes or hand grenades. I'm not trying to make this like a silver lining thing. And whether Bates kick missed or made, like the things remain the same, right? There's still a lot to work on. And having humility and putting yourself in check, that's going to be important. You know where there's no humility? That other sideline, right? And the Lions, you know, they take the cues from Dan Campbell. And I like Dan Campbell, but they are very verbose, they're very boisterous. And also, I think Lions fans take their cue from Dan Campbell, too, is what it is, right? But, you know, you have to play better than your opponent. You have to play better than the ref's ref. Yeah, we pointed out several inconsistencies in officiating on Sunday, but we're not trying to make an excuse. We're just literally pointing out uh, something stinks in Denmark, right? But Darnold has to get things together. Offensive line-wise, Ingram has to sit 
Ingram should be cut and, and deported to China. Start learning Chinese, buddy. And defensively, th- th- they got to get something going. Where it can't just boil down to Cashman was out. That's why they couldn't stop the run. That's not it, right? So Flores, you know, especially the pass rush was getting muted by the Lions' great defense, and he didn't call off the dogs. And second half, that they adjusted a bit, but Jared Goof was still doing business, especially on third down. Like, there's so many times where they converted on third down when they needed to have it, and the Vikings definitely could have used a stop. Now, you respect the, the scoop and score. It's fantastic, right? But you shouldn't have to rely on bolts of lightning plays like that. I mean, they're fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but you can't build your team around that. You need more consistency in the trenches, and they'll get back to good. Because it's not like the Vikings have played a, a cupcake schedule, like the Bears, right? Uh, so the, the Vikings still have quality caliber wins this season. And, you know, the Lions game, that's on the Vikings. I, I don't chalk it up so much as a Lions win as the Vikings literally beat themselves, right? And it, it should give you confidence that even with everything working against them, lethargy coming off of the bye, bad coaching decisions, and bad execution at times, the Vikings still loss on a last second field goal and they had a league right, right at the end they fought their way all the way back so hey i mean if the lions want to be thumping their chests and acting like they won, won the super bowl today that's perfectly fine fully understand that but you knew you were gonna go undefeated and frankly I, I think that the short week works in the vikings favor because they don't have time to get down on themselves they have to get back to business and this rams team is not going to be a pushover on thursday night so get to six and one Go one to know this week, right? And get your mind right, or hopefully Kevin O'Connell will get it right for you. And I love and respect Kevin O'Connell, but in tough situational spots, he has to get better. It's year three. Like he has to get better at situational football, situational play calling, and you know, the play calling on that three and out late, the the two point conversion where it was just whatever, uh, not getting Jefferson the ball in the first half, digging yourself a hole that you couldn't get out of, deciding to still roll with Ed Ingram, even though it's clearly, he's clearly a liability out there. Got to make decisions, right? This is still a very damn good football team that just went toe to toe with, again, allegedly who the media uh, has crowned the number one team in the National Football League. And you had the lead late, all right? So sack up, nut up, you'll be good to go, right? Offensively, defensively, teams-wise, Will Riker is still the best. That's what I'm going to take away from this game. But tranquilo, tranquilo, everything will be fine. And this loss is going to humble this team and should piss them off. So watch out what happens on Thursday, right? And we're, we're going to get a good glimpse on what this team's character actually is. Are they one that bounces back? One that says ref- refuses uh, the, to have this happen again, or they're just gonna you know sail through. It's like, oh, hey, if we lose to the Rams, we, we get ten days off, we get another mini buy back to Cabo. No, we're, we're gonna see what this team is made up on Thursday, and I, I think we're, we're like what we see. Hopefully, anyways, that's it. Raw, real garage rant. You guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull, no production value.